The distinction between a population and a sample is at the center of statistics. A population is the entire set of people or things that we're interested in. Now, most of the time, we won't have access to the entire population. For example, if we're studying salmon in the North Atlantic, there's no way for us to access every salmon, to pull every salmon out and examine it. Now, what we usually can do is examine a subset of the population. For example, we could fish 100 salmon and then use them to represent the entire population. This subgroup is what we mean by a sample. Now, in, in our first case study here, we have a, a common situation where a manufacturer needs to test the product being produced to ensure that it meets quality standards. Now, clearly they can't test every item. Not only would it be prohibitively expensive, but in some cases, like drug manufacturing, uh, it would leave the tested items unsellable. So the solution is to go to the production line and pull every 100th product from the line. So it's the red ones here that were being pulled and sampled. All right, so those are the ones that we're going to test. So to identify the sample versus the population, remember that the sample are always the items that we're actually you know, measuring, weighing, or otherwise observing. So in this case, that would be the bottles that are being pulled out of the assembly line. Now, identifying a reasonable population can be a little tricky, right? You always want to define this narrowly. So in this case, a reasonable choice would be all of the bottles from the same production run as the sample. Anything broader than that, for example, all the bottles produced on a given day, that would probably be too much, right? Because if the machines have to be reset or resupplied, for example, that could cause errors in an afternoon batch that you didn't see in the mornings. So this is another situation uh, where we have to think narrowly, right? The sample are the 100 students that we are actually going to be interviewing. Right now, you might be tempted to say that uh, the population is all the students in the school, right? But this would be too much, right? I mean, you're reasoning that everyone in a given region, for example, will have different tastes. But the problem with this is that students change significantly over the four years between ninth and 12th grades. So it isn't necessarily reasonable to assume that the tastes of freshmen are going to represent the taste of seniors. Right? So in this case, I wouldn't expect the population to be anything more than just that freshman class. Now in this case, it's, it's the all part in the description uh, that, that makes the, this a little tricky. So to answer this, you have to know what the researcher's goal was. If, for example, there was some issue with that particular two mile stretch, right? Then that was all the researcher was interested in. So the alligators that were measured will be both the sample and the population because he surveyed all of them. On the other hand, if the researcher was interested in alligators in general, then the ones measured would still be the sample, but the population could be expanded, for example, to include all of the alligators in the river as a whole. So for the rest of the class, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about values calculated from data, for example, averages and percentages. And it's going to be important that we have a way of distinguishing between 
values that describe a sample that we'll actually be able to calculate, and values that describe a population, which generally speaking, we won't. So we're gonna call values calculated from the sample data statistics and the corresponding values for the entire population are called parameters. So I've gone back to our first sampling example here. Uh, in a situation like this, the proportion or percentage of products that are defective out of the bottles taken from the line would be a statistic, right? Where the, the proportion that are defective in the entire batch, remember that was our population, that would be a parameter. So looking ahead, what we'd like to be able to do is claim that the statistic value is a good representation of the parameter value. In other words, the sample and its properties are representative of the entire population and its properties. Okay, so uh, what's coming up next? Uh, in the next uh, series of lectures, five or six of them, um, we're going to kind of take the next step and talk about variables. Right? What, what does a variable mean uh, in terms of statistics? We're going to kind of contrast that to the variables that you're already familiar with from your algebra classes.